This is the fourth of a series of videos about complex arithmetic methods and geometric interpretations. In the, in the first three videos, we focused on what it means to add complex numbers, both algebraically or arithmetically and geometrically. The example was 3 plus 6i plus 4 plus 5i to get 7 plus 11i. We plotted the original points, 3 plus 6i and 4 plus 5i as points in the complex plane, as well as their sum, 7 plus 11i up here. And if you also plot the origin, 0 plus 0i, you see that this forms a parallelogram. In the last video, we focused on making this a little bit more clear, that it definitely is a parallelogram, by adding line segments using the Mathematica command graphics within a show that can be used to combine two graphic outputs, the first coming from list plot and the second coming from graphics, to get this parallelogram that we see here. And we also change the line to arrow to draw arrows in instead of line segments to emphasize that complex numbers and their addition can also be thought of in terms of vectors. That's what I want to focus on in this video. And let me start by changing the sum, the, the vector for the sum, from being blue to black. So we can see it a little bit better there. So again, when you look at this picture, <clears throat> you can think of the dots as representing complex numbers, the red dots, as well as the blue vectors and the black vector as representing complex numbers. This red dot represents the complex number 3 plus 6i, as well as this blue arrow here that points from the origin to it, as well as this blue arrow that starts at the point 4, 5 and ends at the point 7, 11. Vectors are determined by their length and their direction, their magnitude, and the angle that they make with the positive real axis, for example. Those two blue arrows right here and right over here are the same length and the same direction. Likewise, this point, this red point, is the complex number 4 plus 5i. This blue arrow is that same complex number thought of as a vector. And this blue arrow, arrow it represents that same complex number thought of as a vector. The black arrow that starts at the origin and goes out to the point 7, 11 is the arrow, the vector, that represents the complex number 7 plus 11i, their sum. And <clears throat> it is always the case that when you, when you add complex numbers that do not lie in the same line through the origin, you will always get a parallelogram like this when you uh, draw these arrows in this way. Let me also emphasize that you can think of this vector addition in another way. Let me um, get rid of one of these graphics things here. Let's see. Got to do this right. I'm also going to get rid of this one here. All right, I guess I'll leave all four dots there, but let's focus just on the arrows here. When you add, well, in this case, let's think of it as 4 plus 5i plus the complex number 3 plus 6i. You can think of it in terms of the parallelogram, but you can also think of it just in terms of three vectors, three arrows. This first blue arrow, put it at the origin, or it actually doesn't matter where you put it, but I'll, I'll put it at the origin here, is the complex number 4 plus 5i. And then you take the arrow for the complex number 3 plus 6i, and you place it so that its base is at the tip, the ending point of the first arrow, like this. So it goes from 4, 5 to 7, 11. And if you've done that, then their sum is drawn by starting at the base of the original arrow, the first arrow, and ending at the tip of the second arrow that you added. You form this triangle that can help you see where their sum is. And one thing I want to point out in looking at this triangle is that it's a basic fact with, with any triangle that the length of any one side is less than or equal to the sum of the lengths of the other two sides. <clears throat> so we have this black arrow, this vector, has a length that, that is less than or equal to, in fact it is less than, the sum of the lengths of these other two arrows. That's a pretty obvious fact. It's, it's basically in Euclidean geometry equivalent to the fact that the shortest distance between any two points is the straight line along the straight line between them. In complex analysis and in 
real analysis, uh, such a statement written in terms of some notation that I'm not going to show you here, but I will in a future video, is called the triangle inequality, and you can see why it comes from a triangle. The length of any one side, like this one, is less than or equal to the sum of the lengths of the other two sides. And I could apply that to any of the, the sides of this triangle. Thought of in terms of vectors, the length of this vector, um, which is the sum of these two vectors, is less than or equal to the sum of the lengths of these two blue vectors. Again, that's called the triangle inequality. With the time we have remaining, I want to show you another Mathematica feature. Go back to my original picture here. A very important thing with recent versions of Mathematica is it gives you a nice way of making animations to illustrate concepts. And I'd like to uh, make an animation for you, and the, the key command, it's actually not the only one, but one of the main key commands for you making animations is the command manipulate. So you see that I type the word manipulate there and a square bracket. I'm going to embed everything that I've got with the show inside of manipulate. So I also have to add, have an ending square bracket over here. Notice that a little arrow popped up, a little red arrow here. That's telling you that I need, or telling me that I need more input before I can enter this, or otherwise I'm going to get a, a, an error message. You need a comma before you put that input. And what does that input need to be? It needs to be uh, essentially what I call an animation parameter, a quantity, a letter, and a range of values that that animation parameter can vary over. And we want to keep it simple in this video. I'll show you more interesting things in a later video. Um, let's call the animation parameter A. And let's A let A vary between, well, let's say uh, 2 and 5. So by typing this, I've got a quantity A that I'm calling an animation parameter. And I'm letting it vary between 2 and 5, and by default it'll start at the left endpoint there. It'll start at a value of 2. And as A changes, it's going to make, make an animation. But nothing's going to happen if I enter this as it is, because I haven't said how A is going to affect the picture. What is going to change? What, what is A going to affect? And what I'd like to have it affect is I'd like to have it affect the first component or first coordinate, if you will, of the vector 4, 5, representing the complex number 4 plus 5i. I'd like to change this 4 to being, and actually let's change, the, let's change the other one. Let's change this 3 to being an a. So 3 plus 6i is going to become a plus 6i. And so as a changes, this initial point for this blue arrow is going to change from being at the point 3.6 to being initially at the point 2.6, and then as A varies, it'll go up to the point 5.6. I also, if I'm going to keep this diagram consistent, better change it over here as well. And the sum of the vectors that I get when I change the, the real part of 3 plus 6i to be an ar being an arbitrary A is also going to change. Instead of being 7 plus 11i, it'll be a plus 4 plus 11i. So these 7s are going to change to a plus 4. Maybe I should start a at 3 instead of 2 to emphasize that I'd, I'd like to start at, that I, I can do that, and I'd like to start where at 3 plus 6i. By doing this, in place of the A, that will cause A to start at 3 before I do the animation. I think I've got everything set here. Let's give it a try at least. So I'm entering it, and I get this box, and within the box you see an A as well as the graph here. A has a value of 3 to start off with, but notice there's a play button here. I can play it. 
and see what happens as I change. Well, I just need to change the points too. Okay, so the arrows are doing the right thing. I forgot to change the points. To illustrate this vector concept as far as it always making parallelograms, let's go ahead and change the points as well. That's an A and this is a full A plus four. Now the red dots will change as well as I change A. No matter what A is, you can see that the parallelogram law holds for adding complex numbers and it's kind of fun to enjoy to change how the animation happens you can well you can make it go faster or you can make it go slower you can make it go backwards trouble here. It seems to be stalling on me. Okay, that's slower. Step backwards. Okay. Anyway, manipulate and the animations you can create with it, to me, are the heart of what makes Mathematica so much fun and so useful. And we're going to do lots with manipulate in these videos.